What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Kings and Priests podcast. I'm Michael, and normally I'm here with Dean Sweetman. Uh, but today I got a uh, couple of buddies of mine on that I'm excited to chat with. I'm here with Gibson Brewer and Scott Bolin. What's up, fellas? How you doing? What's up? Afternoon. Good to see you, Michael. You guys well? You guys doing good? Doing Scott? good. Scott, you're in Texas. Girls. A one year old running around our house now. So it's, a, it's pure madness. Heck yeah. I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Just trying to survive. Yep. <laughs> I hear you, man. We're just three of us with just young kids, man. It's no joke. It's absolutely yeah. no joke, right? Scott's got three. He's he's definitely in the lead here. Yes, that is very true. That I don't is know very if this true. is a race I'm trying to win. <laughs> well, you're winning. <laughs> you're winning. Oh, yeah, Congratulations. you're winning. Congratulations. Apparently. <laughs> Uh, man, it's good to have you guys on here. We've been chatting about making this happen for a while now. And uh, I want to get to, uh, in a second, what you guys are building at Disciples, which is disciples.io, which is a social media for uh, tool for churches that is uh, really incredible that you guys just launched. Um, so I want to hear more about that. But there's a show uh, about entrepreneurships, about entrepreneurship and the intersection between business, entrepreneurship, tech, uh, and faith. And so before we jump into what you guys uh, have built uh, and are building, uh, why don't you guys just give us a quick backstory? What, you know, kind of got you here? Uh, what else in sort of the entrepreneurship space have you done? Scott, I know you've been super involved in Theosu and Theos Seminary. We've known each other from that. So Gibson, why don't you start out, man? Let us know, like, where, where are you from? What's your story? Yeah. Uh, and what made you decide to, you know, launch a, launch a business? Yeah, sure. Well, it's great to be here and super excited to get to share a little bit about disciples and just kind of have a discussion about um, where the church is at in the social media space. Um, I started out, you know, really from an from entrepreneurial level um, in college, learned Chinese, uh, studied abroad, uh, was doing Chinese full time for about five years, lived in Taiwan for a while. And um, uh, after I did all that, I just really realized that is not where I wanted to be. You know, the, the, that's that's where I was led. That's where I ended up. But, um, you know, family brought me home and it just it, it was a better situation for me to be stateside. So um, after that, I kind of entered into the church technology space, started working for a relatively large uh, church tech company um, here in Nashville, Tennessee, is at least where I'm located and, and really started to realize that there's a lot of opportunity to make an impact, you know, from an entrepreneurial level in the church vertical. Um, I think that churches need more tools than private industry, but they're a lot less, right? The, the message, what we're selling, the products is a lot better than most companies, uh, at, at most churches at least. Uh, and so they need the tools to really make that happen. So, um, got started out with disciples at least, uh, about, about, I would say, a year, year and a half ago, um, was in church. All my best, all my best ideas are Holy Spirit driven. Usually in the last, you know, the, the walkout worship song, you guys uh -huh. have those, right? Mm -hmm. Right before they say, Hey, you can get out of here. They start playing a worship song to yep. see if anybody's moved one last time. It's the last, last yeah. ditch effort to move people to the pulpit. But, uh, <laughs> those, those were my best ideas come in. I think, I don't know. I can't explain it. Um, Love but, that. um, uh, really realized that, uh, you know, churches are using, social media ubiquitously, right? All churches have social media one way or another. Um, and, and, and most churches have uh, social media before they have a building, right? So it's a really critical part of our ministry. And there's no church focused tools uh, that are that are working towards enhancing the use of social media and, and uh, kind of liberating people from the, the, the the bounds of Facebook, right? So many churches are stuck on Facebook and that's all they use. So that's kind of really where it started, right? I decided that, you know, we had an opportunity to really serve the church with an amazing platform that helped them spread the good news um, across all platforms uh, and was really focused on what the church does. And, and now we're here. Cool. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah, uh, man. What about you, it's, man? Uh, you know, I think somewhat similar, but I would say like my best ideas come when I'm supposed to be paying attention. <laughs> you know, it's like pastor gets into the first point and I'm like, and I think of something like, oh, this would be a great idea. My wife hates it. Yeah, man. No, you're, you know, it's, uh, firstly, I just want to say, man, yeah, I love being here and, uh, just huge fan of what you guys are doing and, um, you know, Dean and the whole team at Tithely. And, you know, like, I think that churches need good technology and, um, we need, you know, the right people coming up with the right tools to serve the church at large. And so, um, just love what you guys are doing. 
Thanks for having us on. Um, mm. And yeah, a little bit about me, um, you know, I've been in ministry in some capacity for, I don't know, 15 years or so. Um, started off doing ministry school years ago overseas at a very large church and um, and then came over to, back to the U.S. and was working in higher education all the while serving churches. And what that looked like initially was helping churches with like leadership development programs, building colleges, seminaries. And and that's kind of how I got, you know, linked up with Nathan and the guys and came on and co-founded the seminary. And so throughout my career has been, you know, looking for unique ways to serve churches and their unique needs. Right. And um, there's no greater need than engagement for the local church. Right. And to Gibson's point, like um, we met through, you know, this company where we work um, doing, you know, software for churches. And we talk to people all the time that are they're hyper focused on engagement, but no one really knows what that word means. Right. It's like engaging has become a really like unanimous church word. And it's a great word, right? It has great meaning behind it. But when you really try to dive deeper with people to try to learn, like, what is engagement? Like, what do you, what do you mean by that? That's where it kind of gets lost. It gets kind of, you know, intangible. And to Gibson's point, every church, even the small denominational church that you pass on a back road in your town, they probably have Facebook, right? They may have a landline phone. <laughs> they may not even have <laughs> Wi-Fi. They probably have a Facebook. Someone <laughs> is, you know, probably messing with yeah. that. So um, yeah, so it came alongside Gibson not long ago and, you know, we launched a couple months ago and, um, you know, now we're in the fun part of like talking to users and learning from churches, like what are their needs? Like that's, you know, that sort of thing. So yeah, man, it's fun. So let's, um, let's talk about what actually, no, let's get to that in a second. I want to, I want to take a pause because, so you guys both have families, uh, you have jobs. So, uh, you have Scott, I know a lot of what you do with Theo Seminary, right? So like you, you guys are are not, you don't have a lot of spare time. So like, talk to me about, this is a show about in many ways, like going zero to one for an entrepreneur, right? So yeah. like, talk about that process. Like when have you found time to build this? How do you do it? How do you guys communicate? Like, uh, just talk to me about what that process has been like. Cause I think a lot of people, they want to wait for the perfect scenario. They want to wait to like raise, raise money or they want to wait until they, you guys just said like, we're going to build this and we're going to put it out, you know? Um, yeah. So maybe just talk to me about like how you have managed all of that and, and why just kind of build it yourselves, put it out, not raise a dime and just kind of do it the way that you've done it. Like talk to me about what that process was like and uh, why you launched it the way that you did. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, Scott, I can, yeah, I can, yeah. I can jump in here. Um, uh, yeah. So, I mean, first things first, like, you know, it's, it's not easy. You know, anybody who's out there and, and they decide, you know, I want to start a software company or any company, um, you know, whether it's in the faith vertical or wherever, um, it's not easy. And the hardest thing is just doing it. You know, that Scott and I talk a lot about how we don't have to be the biggest geniuses to make make this happen. Right. Um, almost like any idiot could do it. It just takes doing it. So, you know, for me, it, it's all about every day. How do we take a step forward? Right. It, maybe it's a lateral step sometimes, maybe sometimes you accidentally take a backward step, but try to continue moving forward because if you kind of get stuck in the, um, in trying to experiment or trying to have enough money or trying to have a better understanding of your users, right? All those things are good and they're valuable to someone who's starting a business, but th they're not going to get you forward, right? So every day, like taking a concrete step forward, whether that's um, whether that's wireframing out what your software might look like, or if it's a different kind of company, like just, just coming up with different ideas to be able to make some tangible progress on a daily basis uh, has been really critical. And then, and then also like leaning on, you know, leaning on other thought leaders and, and experimenters and, and knowledgeable people in the space is always really valuable. Like, I mean, you got great people in podcasts like, like Kings and Priests that can help you. But um, one book that was really impactful for me was uh, The Lean Startup. If you've never read it and, and you're interested in entrepreneurship, I mean, obviously, I, I think that's an amazing, amazing opportunity. It talks about um, the build, measure, learn feedback loop and uh, how, how it's really critical to build something and then quickly measure it and then quickly learn from it. You know, if you're trying to start something up and it takes a long time for you to do those things, um, it'll fail, right? Time is is the ultimate killer because things happen in our lives, you know, money runs out, whatever it is. So read the lean startup um, and, and take actionable steps, right? Tangible things that move you forward. Man, it's funny, right? Because I think, uh, I don't know, like, you know, you guys know your parents, like your whole world is your family, you know, and it's like, 
it's like the greatest privilege and the greatest honor to just like steward a life and watch it become a person. And mm-hmm. my, my, you know, um, for people listening, I have three kids under three. So yes, I do cover your prayers. You know, I have a daughter who she'll be three in December. And then I, uh, we have twins who are, will be one year at the end of this month. See, so yeah, it's kind of crazy. Right. But it's like, I'm at this season now where it's like my daughter, you know, she now has personality and she has preferences. And like, she has, you know, we like this movie. We don't like that one. And then <laughs> we like this snack. We're not sure about that one. It's like, So she's becoming a person, right? And it's like just this amazing honor. And it's like, it's like, how do you fit? How do you fit other stuff into that? Like, you know what I mean? But I I think like what I'm learning slowly, watching people who are way ahead of me and just talking to people that are much older and have much more wrinkles (laughs) is that like, um, you know, for me, I, I only put my time into things or invest into things that I enjoy, you know, like. I've just never been the kind of person like, and I'm not against it, but I'm just, I'm not like a drop ship type person. I'm not like a, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm not into like get rich quick type stuff. And it, for me, it's just more about the journey too. It's like, you know, like when we started the seminary, for example, like it was just, there was a huge need and it's like, the, you know, ultimately it's like, we're sending people into crippling debt to become pastors who know the Bible. Why, why is that? Why? Like we have schools charging, you know, tens of thousands of We have people paying six figures a year to study, to, to go into crippling debt, to go into ministry and then to never and go not make any home. money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so that's a whole thing in itself, but I, but it, you know, it's disciples is very similar, right? It's like, there's a huge glaring problem that everyone's aware of. No one, it's not like people don't know about higher education, right? It's like, people know that it's broken. People have been talking about it for a long time. And it's like, you know, higher education is broken for a different reason, right? I could say it's, it's an experience. It's, it's an experiential package problem. It's like we, we package and price education based on ex- experience. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. the experience of higher ed means if I get a degree in youth ministry or mechanical engineering, it's the same price. Right. Which doesn't really make a lot of sense. I think with engagement, it's a different issue. It's like people know there's like a disconnect. No one can really point to like what it's like churches either have social media and they don't know how to use it or they have social media because they think they're supposed to have it. They don't use it at all. Or they, you know, they, they chase after these, these various things to try to determine like, what is my, what does my social media need to be? And how do I need to use it? And, um, you know, with disciples, like, with what we've built, it's like, hopefully we can come alongside them and actually simplify it. You know, like the internet's been bringing simplification to people's lives for years. They probably don't know how it works, like, but they know that it's making things easier. Like when, you know, when Amazon pitches you a product based on your preferences, you don't, you don't really realize that artificial intelligence doesn't play or whatever, but you know that, yeah, I actually, I do like that item and that's based on who I am. And so, Hopefully what we're trying to do with disciples is try to come alongside churches in a similar way and simplify some of these things that we all kind of see. And so I guess to kind of round out your question, it's like, for me, I enjoy like what we're doing. And so it's, it's not like I'm, you know, I have to kind of fit everything together as much. It's kind of like it all goes together, you know? And it's like, it's, I, I enjoy when the kids go down coming and like reading up on something or, you know, we're always, te- I know the three of us on this call are always texting like about <laughs> features and products and bugs and, you know, just all trends and all, all kinds of stuff. Right. But mm-hmm. so, yeah, I think like have fun with it. That's, that's what I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. I love that. That's really cool. So let's talk about disciples for a second. So here's what I love about uh, you guys and your products. So Dean and I talk a lot about like this whole podcast is about zero to one, right? Like I want to yeah. start a business. What do I do? And one thing that we always go back to is like, be an expert at something, have a unique uh, perspective or a unique angle, right? Like Dean talks about like the only reason he's built Tithe is because he was a pastor for 30 years. Mm. And so like, it wasn't hard for him to like spot a problem. So what I love about you guys, and and maybe one of you just give us a quick like ex- explanation of what disciples is, but even like deeper than that, like help me understand why you've built the product not just as like a social media engagement tool, but one that is like we understand churches, we understand church teams, and we understand what specific things they need, right? Because that's why I think your product is powerful because you understand the space and you understand the customer. And so maybe just talk about like uh, what disciples is, what it does, but then like just some of the philosophy underneath it that makes you guys go, yeah, we're the people to solve this problem because of our, our unique perspective on it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So disciples, disciples IO is a social media management software for churches. 
Um, so you've seen like later meta business suite, who's sweet. There's, there's a few tools out there for, especially for, you know, private industry businesses, but there's really nothing for churches. And so um, we allow you to post to Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all, all these different places kind of in one spot, manage everything together and grade with your church calendar, you know, make sermon clips, things like that. Um, so that's just kind of the, the high level overview of, of what it is that we do um, and, and how it got started. I would say, you know, where our background comes into play is, is just with probably the sheer quantity of churches that we're speaking to, right? If we were pastors, we probably wouldn't be talking to as many different, diverse, unique churches uh, as we do today. So I speak, I work with about 500 churches a year and get to hear about their problems, the things that they're struggling with, um, the issues they're having, how they're, you know, seeing decrease engagement or COVID hit them really hard. And, um, you know, disciples came about, I would say, from those conversations, but not from a place necessarily of um, uh, this is what we need, but more more from like filling in the blanks, right? You think about it like like a puzzle piece or a, a, you got a big puzzle and there's one piece in there. You don't know necessarily what exactly is on that piece, but you know where the edges are and you know what's missing, right? And, and so that's kind of where Disciples came in. It was like, you know, there's this, everybody's skirting around this issue of social media. Nobody wants to touch it. Right. And the reality is the average person uses seven to eight social media platforms regularly. Right. And your church is only posting to Facebook. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so if we're talking about where are we going to find the lost people? Right. Sure. We can get an app. But is, is our random people that are lost really going to download your church's app? Maybe not. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I would say like filling in the blank is really where disciples came from. And then that's all been um, exacerbated by this rise of A.I., Right. And how AI is obviously so much more prevalent than it used to be. I don't know if you know um, this, but there's demons in AI. So if yeah. your product has AI in it, you are actually partaking in the doctrine of demons. Just so you know, I just yeah. want you to know that that's that's theologically true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's obviously true. And, and that's definitely biblical. Right. There's there's places in the Bible that talk specifically about AI. Um, uh, no, we, there, you do hear some of that, right? You hear a lot of that. And, and I don't think it's a bad thing to have differing opinions about all sorts of things, right? I'm sure they were saying the same thing about the printing press, you know, when it came out and, you know, ecclesiastical authority was really challenged when the, when the printing press came out. Um, and you know, we're not, you know, obviously we don't want ecclesiastical authority to be challenged in negative ways, but is it so bad to have, to have different thought experiments and different technology challenging the way we do things as churches, especially if we can use them to enhance our ministry. And, and so that's, you know, we saw AI coming on, um, kind of as an opportunity to, um, put the tools in the hands of the church that, that the current church technology companies weren't doing, but you, you know that the secular companies are going to be doing, right? They're going to be, secular companies are going to be leveraging AI to reach more people and draw their attention away from your church, right? So it's really important for churches to keep up. And taking the printing press as an example, right? The, the church was on top of that, right? Almost like most, a majority of what was printed when the printing press was first invented was religious text right and so the, the church was kind of at the forefront of the technology at the time and we really believe that the church should be now too i like that yeah okay so talk to me about church and social media because there is there's a lot of different ways churches use social media mm -hmm. right there are some great ways there's some bad ways there's some cringe ways <laughs> uh, there's some really creative ways, right? So, uh, in, in, in your platform, the way that you're talking to churches, the conversations that you've had, talk to me about, like, I think every church knows why they should be on social media, uh, most yeah. churches, and, and maybe not, maybe I'm wrong. You guys tell me, I think what a lot of them have issue with is like, how, what do I do? Like, yeah you know, how do I use my Instagram versus my Twitter versus my TikTok versus like, talk about um, what you guys have learned in the process. And how would you talk to a church that said, Hey, we're we've been using our Instagram account as like a bulletin board, uh, what should be doing differently? And then like, how does yeah. your how does the, how does disciples help them? Yeah. Like manage track, engage all of that? And then why is it important to be able to manage and track and engage all of that instead of just put it out? Yeah. And see what happens? 
Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll answer. And then Gibson, if you want to fill in any gaps that you see. But yeah, I think one thing that's really you know, important to acknowledge is that like social media is really unique in our time because it changes with us as people. Like, do you ever see your old Facebook statuses from like 10 years ago? Right. <laughs> you're like, in bed. Why did like, I do that? Like, what was like, what is this about? Like, we all have those old, but again, the cultural understanding and expectation of social media had a different place in society. Right. Like if you go back to that time when it was like, you know, like I, like I look at some of my old Facebook stuff from years ago and it's like, I'm just telling random people about what I'm doing that day. It's like, you know, going to go, going to go to the mall today or something like that as if anyone yeah. cares. Right. And it's like, I think that, you know, imagine back then trying to read news on social media. It's like, it, it wouldn't make any sense. You'd be like, why would there be news on social media? Well, now it's like one of the highest, you know, places for people to get news. You know what I mean? It's one of the most commonly held places. So I think that like social media and like the way we interact as a culture with technology is always changing. Like even the way like the internet and like its adoption by churches, there was such a lag, right? Of like, there was like a number of years before church websites existed. And now we've gone, you know, far beyond like people having websites, churches having websites. And now it's like their strategy to websites around like, what does the website do? Like, you know, what, what, you know, methodology are we using for branding to get people in the door? Like only one call to action. There's all this stuff out there, right? And then you factor in SEO and all these things that are always changing. And so, you know, when it comes to churches, they're kind of lost in the middle of this, right? It's like, is our social media for announcing events, you know, or because a lot of people, if you watch a lot of church social media channels, it's mostly just announcements. It's like, hey, don't forget there's a brunch, you know, mm-hmm. next day. Hey, don't forget there's a lunch next day. Hey, don't forget, you know, it's, it's always, hey, don't, forget, hold on. don't forget daylight savings time tomorrow. Don't forget. Yeah, to yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And it's like my favorite, honestly, some of my favorite memes on the internet are about the things that churches post around major mm-hmm. holidays and things like yes. daylight savings, you know, and it's like, uh, specifically ones like, like 4th of July, right. It's like every church feels like they have to post and it's like, mm-hmm. they don't want to be the church that didn't post. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's just funny. Right. So I think like, where, you know, the conversations we're having with churches, they're kind of unsure about what to do, right? I think we have a really cool opportunity at Disciples to kind of curate a strategy for them based on their vision, right? Like I talk to pastors all the time and it's like, you know, when they talk about like where they're going or what they're doing and they have questions about that, my question is always like, well, what's the vision? Like, where are you going? Because, you know, like if, if, cause that's going to change it, right? Like, um, I'm not going to recommend, you know, a certain strategy for your church. If you're, you know, cause every church has different goals, like, you know, not every church is just trying to grow, right? So many are, but you have like really old denominations that they have a lot of priorities like preservation and like, you know, liturgy. There's all these things that are like really crucial to them that aren't just the traditional, like, well, we wanted to grow, grow, grow. So with disciples, we have the ability to kind of come alongside churches, learn a little bit about them and the tool, the AI can learn more about that church and begin to curate a strategy based on their branding, based on their vision, based on their language with the things like our calendar integration and stuff that Gibson's talking about, like it can analyze their church events and recommend posts based on your church, right? You don't have to look at what other churches are doing. We will analyze your data and form a strategy for you. Mm -hmm based on your church and who you are and what you want to accomplish. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's in my mind was like one of the most valuable things we can do. And that's where I see the change happening. Like we can help churches be aware of what's happening as social media is changing with us as a culture rather than them trying to figure it out every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's awesome. Gibson, anything you want to add on that? Yeah. I mean, I would add, you know, from a practical standpoint, you know, if you're a pastor out there and you're, you know, maybe you, you teach on Sunday and you also manage social media, right? There's a decent chance you wear a lot of hats, especially at smaller church, smaller churches or church plants. Uh, we're free for church plants, by the way. Um, Amazing. I love but that. One, yeah. We, we think it's really critical, right? Church plants, um, they need help growing the most, right? They don't have five people on staff to make reels every single Sunday. Um, uh, so, you know, what I would say, the first thing is, you know, how do you as a church enhance your social media? The first thing to do is to just start, right? Like I was talking about with starting a business, right? You just have to take concrete, meaningful steps forward. And that's hard enough, right? We do the posts for disciples. And I can tell you, it is not easy to consistently come up with content, just like it's not for your church. And so that's, I think, where disciples help them, helps the most as a church going from zero to one on social media, right? We're going to give you consistent posts 
five sermon clips every week to be able to post, you know, in short form content to TikTok. Um, we're going to help you post to all your platforms simultaneously. And you're right. It, it is really critical to curate your strategy based on the platform because different platforms have different audiences. However, if you're not posting to any of them at all, except maybe Facebook, you should at least start with doing that. Mm -hmm. Take everything you're posting to Facebook and post it everywhere else too. And that's a good start because at that point, you're able to actually analyze and see where are we getting the most engagement? Who is engaging, right? Is it young people? Is it men? Is it women, right? Being able to see all that data in the disciples platform so that then you can start to make informed decisions, right? So we at disciples, we want to help you go from zero to one on your social media so that then that's where it gets interesting. Right. Once you actually start, you know, it's easy enough to do the work. Now you can spend more time thinking about your strategy and, and trying to understand how do we reach people better on these platforms. Cool. Okay. Talk to me about you guys' co-founder relationship. So a lot of people that we talk to say, I got a business idea. I've got this gifting. Maybe I'm a good sales and marketing person, or I'm a tech sure. person, or I'm a designer. I've got this idea. Talk to me about how you guys came together and said, hey, we're going to do this together. And what were the things that you saw in each other or the resources that each one of you brought to the table or the aligned vision? Because I think like a lot of that is very um, ethereal to people. Like, I, you know what I mean? But maybe just talk about like how that works. How do you guys determine who does what, who takes the lead on one thing versus the other thing. Do you have that figured out yet? Are you still figuring it out? Like give us uh, a little bit of a look, uh, you know, like behind the curtain of like what that day to day relationship looks like for people who, you know, maybe are, are interested in like starting some, starting something like this with, you know, like a friend or someone they know. Yeah. Scott, do you want to, do you want to start that off or me? I mean, I'll start it off. Yeah. I mean, I mean, honestly, for me coming alongside Gibson was easy because he's typically the hardest worker in the room, you know? And so if you, if you're around him for an extended period of time, you know what I mean? Like he, he thinks creatively, like he works hard, like, and he wins. And it's like, that's what I really, you know, I highly recommend like working with people that you've worked with before. You know what I mean? Because uh, good friends aren't always good business partners. And so like, I think Gibson and I are really lucky because we also are like good friends as well. Scott like, and I know, hate each other. I was yeah. going to say, that's not true. Gibson always <laughs> tells me like, guy, I got to talk to Scott again. Jeez. Uh, no, dude. No, he has me. Uh, he actually blocks me between the hours of <laughs> nine and five. Um, no, it's it's cool. No, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, yeah. So I think Gibson's like incredibly sharp and like, so come alongside him, you know, like I know like, Co-founding is huge, right? Like I know a lot of VCs like only work with people who have someone that alongside like a co-founder or, um, you know, it allows you to like bounce and, and get rid of bad ideas amongst each other. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, like I think any of us left to our own devices, it's very easy to drink your own Kool-Aid and be like, oh, like this is awesome. And we've probably all seen products like that on the market <laughs> and they kind of flash in a pan fizzle. Okay. What happened to that? Right. And it's very, you know, um, it, it, ultimately it's like you can build things yourself but it's that what's that that quote it's like if you want to go far you know go with someone mm -hmm. else you know and i think that i think that's everything you know so um yeah in terms of like what that looks like day to day like i'm you know gibson is like incredibly technically proficient and so he can turn bugs around and liaise with development and like like he he gets like you know a side of things that i'm less fluent in you know what I mean? And then together we're able to kind of run and, and connect with people and be really hands-on with customers. And like, you know what I mean? Like uh, we, we care about quality, but we also care about people. And so for us, like if we can deliver quality technology, you know, cause again, churches, quality mission needs quality technology. Like if we can deliver quality technology and just take really good care of the people that are using it and the churches they represent, then it's a win. You know? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I totally agree, you know, with what Scott was saying, especially with how great I am. I mean, I think, you know, spot on, on yeah. these things. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I would say if you are thinking about starting something, definitely do it, but always be considering how can you bring someone else in? Because we were created to do things in fellowship, right? We were created for this community. And I think the listener, I think we believe that here, but listeners, you know, are also going to believe that. And you know, disciples, I think, you know, when I started it, when I got the, the product off the ground, you know, the wheels were moving by the time that I asked Scott if, if he'd be interested in, in like jumping in with me on this, 
Um, and they started moving a lot faster when he came on, right? Because we need to be able to, like Scott said, bounce ideas off each other, or work in fellowship to make something that's really amazing. Um, and I think that's a really critical part, right? If you talk to any of the VCs, right, uh, that are that are funding companies, they will tell you, you know, how many people, right? Or who's your co-founder, right? They they would significantly prefer you to have a co-founder, and there's a reason for that. Um, I, I think that's super super important. You know, even if it's just a random person like Scott who I just kind of picked out of a hat. Mm-hmm. Um, you just closed closed your eyes and pointed, and yeah, just, you just pointed around, rolled a few dice, and and Scott was the Scott was the person that I decided. No, um, yeah. So I, I think that's a really critical piece of it, and and just being able to work with somebody on it is important, right? If you've never you don't have enough time to do everything, right? If you've never, if you've ever heard the story of the founders of Airbnb, right? One of the things that they talk about a lot is how they, they deeply cared about the hosts, the first hosts on Airbnb. And there's a story that that one of the founders tells of meeting with one of their hosts to talk about what can we be doing better? How can Airbnb improve the experience of, as a host and thus improve the experience for, um, for, for guests. And uh, the host basically came to, to him with all these things. Um, they, they had a, a coffee meeting. They talked about everything. And the host said, hey, I've been renting out my, renting out my apartment on a short-term basis for years. And I've taken notes for all those years on everything, uh, everything that I think could be better about short-term rentals. Do you want that? And the founder of Airbnb was like, uh, yeah, I want that. Like all the market research I could possibly get right here. It's like, you know, it's a million dollar book. So he couldn't, I truly believe he could not have spent the time and actually cared about people without a co-founder, right? It's, it's a step further than how it, then you need to care about your customers to be a successful founder. Not only do you need to care about your customers, you need enough time to be able to care about them. Cause if you're, if I'm stuck behind a computer all day, building software, I'm never going to get any customers. Right. So it's really critical to be able to split the workload. That's awesome, man. I love that. Um, okay, so lastly, uh, well, something we talk about on the show a lot is never stop learning. That every, you know, we live in the world of the internet. You can learn anything and everything. Where do you guys learn? What are some of your just like 15, 20 seconds from each of you, whether it's books that you're reading, podcasts you listen to, websites you go to? Like, where do you go to continue building your knowledge and understanding of business building, entrepreneurship, or the sector in which you're building a company in? Yeah, that's right. Really, quick, um, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. So I mean, for me, like I, I've always been into learning. Like I, you know, I have a Bible college degree, bachelor's in business, MBA, started my doctorate in business. Like I, I've always just kind of been like wanting to, get, you know, kind of soak it up, right? So I think in this season where there's lots of kids and there's no time or you know or money for more college and all that fun stuff, I think for me it's always I am super into like micro credentialing. Um, like edX is one of my favorite platforms. You can go in there and take short form courses from like some of the best institutions in the world, right? You want to go watch a course from MIT on, you know, artificial intelligence and what it means for business leaders in 2023, you go do it for free. If you want a certificate, it's like 50 bucks, right? Structured learning pathways from great authoritative minds. So I'm, I'm super into that. I love picking up the occasional book, uh, any kind of articles that I come across when I'm like, you know, in the morning when I'm drinking coffee, I... I'll typically will search through and try to find, you know, what articles have come out over the last day around different topics. And so, um, kind of mixed bag, but, um, all of it. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I, I start my day by listening to several podcasts from Bass Media, right? It's the best way to, to get it going. That doesn't, that pretty... doesn't, that doesn't make you any smarter. <laughs> he's, just, do he's just getting, he's just becoming more Pentecostal. Than <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, no, I, for me, Y Combinator podcast, I'm a big fan of those, um, you know, for more professional training, like things that are really tangible, grow with Google Coursera have, has really great courses. I'm doing more on AI and machine learning right now. Um, lots of books out there. I love the happiness advantage. I talked about lean startup, one of my favorite books. Um, but yeah, I, I love the Y Combinator podcasts. Uh, those are, those are I'm a big fan of. It, I want to, I want to piggyback on something he said. If you're, if you're listening and you're building a business and you're just stressed out of your mind, read happiness advantage. Seriously. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. I haven't read it. I need to read it. I need to check that out. It's so good. Amazing. Well guys, this has been fun. Give me um, just a quick, where can people find you online? Disciples.io, but without the E. Is that right? Yep. It's spelled really techy. 
Really? really techy, same on social media. Yep. Disciples.io, no E in Disciples. Uh, we'd love to have you guys try the platform. 14 days, free trial, no credit card required. Check it out. Let us know what you think. Any feedback we can get, we're looking for. Amazing. If you're in Nashville, awesome. hit me up. We'll grab some coffee and talk about your church. Heck yeah. I love it. I love it. Gibson, Scott, dude, it was good, good chatting with you guys, not on text today. I, uh, yeah, I love it. Let's, let's do this more often. And uh, hey, if you're listening, uh, yeah, check out Disciples. There's going to be a link in the show notes. And uh, we will see you back here again next week. Talk to you all soon.